Hello everybody, my name's Mike Hilliard and I'd like to welcome you to a tutorial on magics. What I'm about to describe is not the only way to proceed with magics, but it works for me. This is the magics main screen. The menu bar at the top provides drop-down menus for most magics functions. The program monitor to the left of the screen displays video and image objects both from the show being built and from the media pool. The media pool to the right provides access to external sources for pictures, music, video, etc. Templates for transitions, titles and effects are accessed via tabs at the top of the media pool. The lower toolbar offers different project viewing modes and tools relating to editing. The arranger, situated toward the bottom of the screen, is the space to drag and drop files from the media pool and then to arrange and edit them. The arranger can operate in different modes. Storyboard mode displays all images and clips in a panel where they can be easily manipulated and arranged. Timeline mode is for more involved arrangements and effects work and separates out different parts of the show onto separate tracks. Scroll bars are provided to navigate within the show. In timeline mode, a vertical scroll bar enables viewing different tracks where many are in use. When magic starts, you are offered a choice of starting a new project or opening an existing one. We will start with a new one and enter Magic's Presentation as the title. First we need to set the movie settings. From the File drop-down menu select Settings and then Movie. In the dialog box that appears, click the Video Settings drop-down menu and select PAL HDV2 1080i 16-9 and in brackets 1440 by 1080 25 frames per second. This works fine for 4x3 images mixed with video in 4x3 or 16x9. Click OK. Returning to the main screen, select Storyboard mode. Click the Import tab and select Computer. A display of the drives on the machine will appear. Navigate from here to where your media files are located. These are the media files that I will use. They have been auto-aligned and adjusted to the stereo window in Stereo Photo Maker, but are otherwise straight from the camera. They do not require resizing to 2800 by 1050. You can view each of these media pool files in the program monitor by clicking the blue triangle. If it is a file that you want to use, click the ringed downward arrow. The image is copied to the storyboard. Note: Magix does not change your stored movie and image files. Any editing done in the program affects only the show, not the stored files. Now several files have been downloaded and it's time to tell Magix that they are 3D images. Select them all by clicking on the first then holding the shift key down whilst clicking the last. All selected images will be highlighted in blue. Now click the Effects tab and select Stereo 3D and then Properties. In the Properties window Standard brackets 2D will appear. Note that the image appearing in the monitor is a side-by-side -side pair. Click the Create Stereo drop-down menu button. And select side-by-side -side brackets left image to the left, full width. Note that the image in the monitor is now a single image, 
or an anaglyph if you've selected anaglyph from the drop-down menu at the top left-hand side of the monitor. Magix now knows that it's dealing with 3D images. Each image in the storyboard mode has parameters such as duration associated with it. If you click on the duration figure, a dialog box opens enabling modifying this figure. I am OK with the timings on this show, so I will leave that for now. Between the images in storyboard mode lies a symbol, that's an A and a B in a box, representing the transition between the images. By default, these are a straight cut. To access alternatives, click the Fades tab and select Standard. Twelve options appear. Click on Leaf Through and drag its symbol over the required transition box. You can repeat this with other transition types. Ad nauseam. Here, leaf through is captured part way through, and as I like it, I decide to use that throughout. I right click the first transition box, and from the pop up menu that appears, I select Apply to All. Now I want to add a title at the start of the show. I import a blank grey background made at 1024 by 768, that is 4 to 3, in Photoshop. This will remain in 2D. I want a plain crossfade from this to the first image, so I right click the transition box and in the pop up menu that appears I click crossfade. Note that the AB symbol has now been replaced by the crossfade symbol. Next I need to change to the timeline mode, so I click the timeline symbol. Here I have selected the grey background and ensured that the time cursor lies within it. I have selected the title tab and clicked general. Now I have selected the font and size that I want to use and the style. I click in the program monitor panel and the title box appears ready for typing. I oblige and when finished I click the tick. The position needs adjusting and I think the border of the typeface is still set to white, not black. So, I adjust the position, double click the title to go back into Edit, click Effects and Advanced, and select black for the outline. That's better, and now I want to make the title fade in and out. First I move the mouse over the start of the title box which has appeared in track 2 and when the move symbol, that's two little parallel lines together, appears I click and hold and move to the right, releasing when the start position is correct. Now I can put the mouse pointer over the semicircle on the leading edge and when the diagonal double arrow appears, I click and hold and again move it to the right. The fade in is now defined. And I can go on to repeat the process for the fade out. I now want to bring the title in front of its background, and so with the title selected in track 2, I select Effects tab and Stereo 3D and Properties. In the Stereo Depth for 2D Objects field, I select 1.4 by clicking the up arrow. Next, I want to insert a soundtrack of background music. I select the Import tab 
and Computer, and then navigate to where the music file is located. I drag the file to track 4. Here it is, waiting to be positioned and edited. I select it, right click it and select Volume Curve. Now I have removed the silence from the front end, which is the same process as adjusting the start of the title, which we did earlier. Move the track to the left and use the volume curve to create a fade in of the sound. Clicking the green line introduces handles that enable a section of the curve to be moved up or down. The back end also requires adjustment to finish at the end of the show. And here again the level is adjusted to provide a fade out. A word now about mouse modes when used in timeline mode. If you press 6 on the keyboard you enter a mode where you can move any item on any track independently of all other items. If you hit 8 the mode changes so that all items on the same track following the item you have selected will move with it. Hitting 7 gives a mode where all the items on all tracks following the selected item will move with it. With complex shows the use of these modes plus use of the grouping and ungrouping features can avoid much anguish. It's time to export our show. From the File drop-down menu select Export Movie and Video as AVI. In the dialog box that appears enter these export settings. Resolution 2800 by 1050 and Magix will actually give you 2800 by 1048 for some reason but this works fine. 25 frames per second Interlace, Progressive, Stereo 3D, Side by Side, Left Picture on Left, Complete Width. Make sure that you give your show an OK Path and File Name and then hit Advanced. Make sure that XVID MPEG4 codec is selected. If it doesn't appear in the list you will need to download it and you can do that free from the web. And then hit Configuration. Here make sure that encoding type is set to single pass and target quantizer to 1.32. For very large shows two pass operation may be needed. Now hit OK in each of the three open dialog boxes and your show will start rendering. There will be a blue progress bar at the bottom of the screen which will finally reach the right hand side on completion. The completed show will run under stereoscopic player in full width mode and will be fine for 4x3 projection systems such as are used in London and Coventry. If you wish to run the show on a 3D TV, the best way is to import the AVI file that you've just generated into a video editor that can make ISO files. Sony Movie Studio Platinum is one such editor and I know that there are others. To my knowledge these ISO files will play on a Mediator media player via HDMI into a Samsung Active Screen 3D TV. Well, that's it. So, good luck with your showmaking and thanks for listening.